Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the gross anatomy of the flexor or anterior muscles of the forearm. The flexor muscles of the forearm are primarily responsible for flexion of the wrist and fingers. Some of them crosses the elbow joint, so they also flexes the elbow. This is the anterior surface or flexor surface of the forearm. This is forearm. In anatomical position, this is the flexor surface or anterior surface. So, these muscles are located in the anterior compartment of the forearm and are divided into three layers, superficial, intermediate and deep layer. We have the superficial muscles here, like pronator teres then flexor carpi radialis then we have the palmaris longus then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris then we have intermediate muscle layer only one muscle this is the flexor digitorum superficialis we have deep muscles like that of the flexor pollicis longus okay flexor pollicis longus then we have the flexor digitorum profundus okay so that is deep to that is located deeply and its tendons are here these are the tendon distal tendon of, of the flexor digitorum profundus we'll see the flexor digitorum profundus in another another image okay we got that so and the, another muscle deep muscle is the is the pronator quadratus this muscle some book also say the deepest muscle or the fourth layer of muscle so we have the superficial muscle intermediate we have one muscle flexor digitum superficialis and deep muscle deep muscle we have the flexor pollicis longus Flexor, flexor pollicis longus here. We have the pronator quadratus and flexor digitorum profundus muscle. Okay, flexor muscles of the forearm, superficial layer of the forearm muscle we just discussed, pronator teres. We have the pronator teres here. The superficial flexor muscle has one common origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus okay it's because it crosses the elbow joint these muscles that have also a weak flexor of the elbow joint not very strong but weak flexor but they work mostly in the wrist and the forearm okay like pronator teres muscle here this will be inserted here so this is mostly for pronation it it has no action on the wrist and the fingers so it is starting from here going to here so it crosses one joint here and the radio ulnar joint okay so it, it work on these two these joints then we have the flexor carpi radialis going to the carpal bone it passes over the carpal bone inserts to the second metacarpal bone flexor carpi radialis this is the flexor carpi radialis muscle okay radialis tendon then we have the the palmaris longus palmaris longus muscle is here it may be absent in around 14 person individual specifically especially in the left side and this tendon is inserted to the flexor retinaculum and the, and the palmar aponeurosis. We have another muscle. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris here. This muscle is the muscle which is which is different innervation than the other muscle. Other muscles are getting innervation from the median nerve. This muscle is getting innervation from the ulnar nerve. So how can we remember the superficial muscles? We remember we have mnemonic and this mnemonic I have picked up from multiple websites. 
So one useful mnemonic to remember the muscles of the superficial layer is pass, fail, pass, fail. We stand for parietal teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpalnaris. Okay, we got the muscles of the superficial layer of the forearm. All of them are innervated by the median nerve, with the exception flexor carpi ulnaris, innervated by the ulnar nerve. Okay. We got that and here we are seeing some relationship of some blood vessel like brachial artery divided into ulnar artery and the radial artery. Here we have the nerve here, the median nerve, it passes between the two head of origin of the pronator teres. This is the muscle here and this is the nerve here, the median nerve over the pronator teres deep head and covered by the superficial head. We got that. Okay. Here is the flexor carpi ulnaris. It has again two head. Between two head, we are getting the ulnar nerve. Okay. So median nerve between the two head of parietal teres, the ulnar nerve passes between two head of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay. So, if we go here, flexor muscles of the forearm intermediate layer, flexor digitorum superficialis, the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle, they, this muscle also has origin from the common flexor origin from the, from the medial epicondyle here, okay, it is also origin from the, from the coronary process, coronary process of the ulna as well as from the radius, okay, radius, and this is the flexodidum superficialis, it will be inserted to the side of the, of the second phalanx, I mean, the, this is the, in the side of the intermediate phalanx on both, uh, here, on, on both side here, there, okay, flexodidum superficialis, it insert here. On the middle flanks, with the side of the middle phalanx, it does not cross the cross the distal interphalangeal joint. Okay, so it is confined to here and here. This is the splitting. Then splitting will come to be attached to the side of the of the middle phalanx of the index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and the little finger. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Then deep layer will get the flexor pollicis longus. We have the flexor pollicis longus muscle here. And this muscle going to the thumb, the distal phalanx. Okay. And this is the deep muscle. It should get a deep. It, it is also innervated by the median nerve, but the deep branch, particularly by the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. Then flexor digitorum profundus, okay. We got flexor digitorum profundus here. Flexor digitorum profundus will go to the base of the distal phalanx of the, the second, third, fourth, and fifth finger, the base of the of the distal phalanx. So we have to remember flexor digitorum superficialis go to the side of the side of the middle phalanx or the base of the distal phalanx the site of an insertion of the flexor digitorum profundus then when the muscle deepest muscle some book says the fourth layer pronator quadratus muscle this is the pronator quadratus it extends from the from the ulna to the to the radius okay this is the muscle, this is the flex, this is the pronator quadratus muscle, okay. And this is the flexor digitorum profundus here, we got that. Now, we go to the table, okay. If we go to the table, we got pronator teres origin is here, okay. We just discuss it insertion, middle of the lateral surface of the, of the, of the radius. Okay, the median nerve innervation action ponets the forearm and flexes the elbow joint. It flexes because it crosses that joint. 
Okay, flexor carpi ulnaris. We have common origin here, medially bicondyl of the humerus, inserts into the base of the second, maybe on the on the third metacarpal bone. It passes over the carpal bone, but it inserts on the metacarpal bone, mostly second metacarpal, maybe along with the third metacarpal. Action flexes and abducts the the wrist joint. Palmaris longus again common origin medially picondyle of the humerus, distal half of the flexor retinaculum and the apex of the palmar aponeurosis. Nerve supply, median nerve, root value C6, C7, flex action flexes the hand and tenses the palmar fascia. Okay, we got that. Flexor carpi ulnaris, flexor carpi ulnaris origin from the Medially picondyle of the humerus, ulnar head, olecranon process, and posterior border of the ulna, insertion to the pisiform bone, hemate bone, and base of the fifth metacarpal bone. Nerve supply ulnar nerve, action flexes and adducts, not abduct, adducts. Flexor carpi, ul carpi radial is abduct, but flexor carpi ulnar is adducts the wrist joint. Okay. We got that. Now, these are the images taken from uh, clinically oriented anatomy. We got the muscle, superficial muscle, pointer teres, flexor carpi radialis here. Then we have the palmaris longus, and pass fail, pass fail, flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay, this is the superficial muscles. Then we'll get the Intermediate muscle, flexor digitorum superficialis, humeral, humeral ulnar head, and also radial head. Inserts to the side of the middle phalanx, the, the second, third, fourth, and fifth fingers. It doesn't go to the distal phalanx. We have the deep muscle, flexor pollicis longus here. Okay. And we have the, it going to the, inserted to the, distal phalanx of the, of the thumb and for the digital profundus going to the basal distal phalanx of the second, third, fourth, fifth finger. Okay. Nerve supply important, flexor digital profundus. It is the lateral side is innervated by the radial nerve and the medial half innervated by the ulna nerve. This is the pronator quadratus muscle. It is innervated by the median nerve, deep branch, anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. Okay, we got that. Now, here, flexor digitum superficialis origin, we got the origin. And we have the insertion middle phalanx of the index middle and ring finger. Nerve supply, we got that. Flexus proximal interpolar joint of the index middle ring and little finger. Metagraphophalangeal joints of the same finger and flexes the wrist joint. Okay, we got that. Okay, this is the actions of the flexor digital superficialis. Okay, now we are looking at the bony attachment. Origin is conventionally red, common flexor origin, the superficial flexor muscles. Ponotor trees also take origin to the lower part of the medial supracondylar rays of the humerus. Okay, from the corner process, we are getting flexor digitorum superficialis as well as partly pronator teres muscle. And this line, okay, anterior border of the radius, is site of origin of flexor digitorum superficialis. Superficialis has multiple origin. Okay, this is the flexor pollicis longus, just below that. Okay, and this is the flexor digitorum profundus over the alma. Okay, anterior surface of the ulna, almost two third, plus the digitum profundus. And here is the insertion of the pronator quadratus, origin of pronator quadratus from radius, from the from the ulna to the radius. Ulna, origin, radius insertion. Big insertion and linear origin. Okay, we got that. Now, deep muscles of flex. Deep flexor muscles of the forearm, we got flexor digitorum profundus, nerve supply, action. Nerve supply is important to us. Lateral half is by the 
medial nerve by anterior interosseous branch, medial half by the ulnar nerve. Flexor pollicis is longer, again deep muscle, innervated by the deep branch of the medial nerve, anterior interosseous nerve. Okay, again parietal quadrata is innervated by anterior interosseous nerve. Anterior interosseous nerve is a branch of the median nerve, and this nerve is for the deep muscles of the deep flexor muscles of the four R. Okay, and that's all about the flexor muscles of the four R. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. Please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice, wonderful and blessed day. Bye now.